everybody. Welcome to Down Home Backyard Gardening. Have you ever gone in your pantry and found a bunch of pantry potatoes sitting at the bottom that you completely forgot about? Eyes all over them going crazy? It's time to get those in the ground, at least for me. And we're also going to plant our sweet potato slips that have been growing since the beginning of December. So as always, and I love to say this this time of year, let's grow. Brought out the sweet potato slips. There they are. They are doing great as always. And then check out these. Now, of course, I do this every year. I always forget about the potatoes at the bottom of the pantry. And ever since I started gardening, I don't really mind because we're going to plant all of those and get a massive harvest of potatoes in a few months, four months or so. So let's, uh, if you've never grown potatoes, it is so easy. Sweet potatoes are a little bit more difficult. We'll get to those in a minute, but let's get these pantry potatoes put in the ground or in the container. I always try to figure out what to do with these bins and this year I'm going to strictly do these regular potatoes in these bins. It's all that's going to go in these two bins right here. Over here I have garlic and some shallots but these bins will be these potatoes. Now I've had potatoes in these bins before at least once and they did pretty good. So I'm excited to do this again except this time in earnest. I'm putting all of these potatoes in these two bins. So there should be a ton of growth because this is very loose soil. I loosened it up about a week ago, so it's a little compacted right now, but not too bad. And we should in a couple weeks have growth already coming up out of the ground, if, you, if not even sooner. So uh, here we go. Before we get into planting, I know what y'all are saying. Crop rotation, Chad, crop rotation. Yes, to a point. I have not had potatoes in these two bins long enough to really take out the nutrients. Plus I amend these beds twice a year. In fact, my entire garden, twice a year, I mend everything. So I'm not really worried about nutrient issues here, and I'm not worried about pests, because when I harvested the potatoes in November or December, whenever it was, there were no pests in either of these bins. So I'm not worried about that, and I'm not really worried about the nutrition issue, so I'm not going to focus right now on crop rotation. Get these out. Isn't it always funny when it does this? It's okay, there's more eyes right there. Look at that one, y'all. What a beast. <laughs> Isn't that bad? Okay, plenty of potatoes to put between these two bins, and uh, this should be really, really good. Okay, that actually equals out perfect. There's six in this one, five in that one. I mean, pretty good. Okay, what I always do is bottom side down, top side up, and I wanna go to where it's about an inch below the soil. This is what I do. This is what I've always done, and I haven't had any problems at all. I always throw in a blood mill and bone mill mixture to every hole, just for that extra added boost. Get them down in, cover them up. Pretty simple. This one's a small one. And that's all we do, y'all. Here we go. like that <laughs> we're done took about five minutes not even that really and here in a few months four months or so maybe a little bit longer we're gonna have a lot a lot a lot of potatoes so I cannot wait to come back show this part right here as a refresher and then show that harvest it should be a really good harvest last thing I have to do for them water it in okay sweet potatoes they take a little bit more TLC than those potatoes did and uh, I'm going to show you exactly what we need to do to get this game really off to the races. Plus, there's a different way of planting and starting your sweet potatoes 
than just doing this jar slip method. Let me show you what that is right now. Okay, two years ago, the only way I could get the sweet potato slips to grow were like this right here. No other way worked for me. So last year when I tried this, they all died. I couldn't even get a slip to grow. So what I did is I went to, so what I did is I went to Lowe's or Home Depot, one of them, and I got these. We've all seen these when you go into those stores, right? And all they are are these little seed sweet potatoes. Now, I did not think I was gonna have any luck with sweet potatoes last year because it took almost a month for these things to start popping up out of the ground. And I completely thought, well, that was a waste of money. I'm telling y'all, these things work just like these work. So in this bed, I'm going to plant them both. These are the exact same way as planting the potatoes that we just did. We're gonna go about an inch or so below the surface, maybe two inches below the surface with these. And I'm going to put each one of these under one of the holes, one of the holes in the drip line. Reason for that is, is I want these seed potatoes to get as much water as possible to really start the germination process. It worked last year. I don't see why it wouldn't work this year. The only difference is, is I didn't know it was going to work. This year, I know it's gonna work. That's why I'm showing y'all this trick because I do know it works. For the sweet potato slips to work, these slips need to have roots growing off of them. But because of the way this one grew, there's no, and I, I apologize about this dog. He is so annoying. But because of the way this sweet potato grew, none of the slips actually have roots on this one. So this entire sweet potato is going in the ground with these vines up top, except I'm gonna cut some of the vine off. So the majority of the growing energy is going to go into the tubers, which if you look right in here, these will all start growing roots once this is under the ground. This entire one is going in the ground. Now, this potato is totally different. And let me show you why. A sweet potato slip are these growths, are these growths with the roots on them. So what you wanna do is you wanna isolate one of these vines with the root system intact down below, right here. And what we're gonna do is just slowly peel this off with as much of the root system as possible, like that right there. Now I know that looked a little violent, but that's what you want. You want all these roots and the vine. So I'm going to do that exact method to this entire potato, getting a whole bunch of these slips so we can plant them separately all over this bed. And then for this one right here, since there's so much growth and the potato is still a part of it, we're just gonna plant this whole thing in the ground. Why not? So off that one jar sweet potato, I got five viable, and they should be very strong sweet potato slips. The only thing now is to bury them, make and I'm gonna make sure that they're under one of the drip hose, one of the drip holes in this drip line to ensure plenty of water, plenty of water. Plus I have all of these to plant, and I'm gonna do an experiment with just one regular sweet potato. Nothing's been added to it. This is one I got from the supermarket. I'm gonna put it in one specific spot in this garden that nothing else is gonna be around. That way I can isolate this one experiment. I don't know if this will do anything. But I thought, why not try, right? Let's have some fun. So, same thing as the other potatoes. We're just gonna bury them, put a little bone meal, blood meal around them, and then at the very end, soak them in. Okay, and that's it. Now, if everything goes to plan, we can expect these kind of results right here. And if we get these kind of results, y'all, it's a success. We're happy. If just one or two, this is the way I look at it. If I get one or two sweet potatoes or potatoes per slip or potato that I 
buried and that I planted, then it's a success because we're getting more than what we planted. For me, if that happens, I'm beyond happy. So we're done. That's all it takes. <laughs> That's all it takes. All those slips took three months to, to get to that point. So it's not just all it takes, but it really is pretty simple. And if you love to garden, if you love to grow things and you love to experiment, then it's not really work, right? All right, everyone, as always, if you learned anything from this, got anything out of it, if you enjoyed the video at all, if you know someone who's going to grow sweet potatoes or potatoes, and you feel this would benefit them, then by all means, please share the video, like the video, and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. I will keep everyone up to date on the progress of both of these tomatoes throughout the spring and summer. And as always, everyone, take care. God bless. I'll talk to y'all again real soon.